greetings and salutations on my friends and family, fans and followers of the Zeta Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining us here for episode 84 of The Revolution. I am your host with the most from the east to the west, west, west coast, like peanut butter on your breakfast toast. Emperor Zeta, coming to you from the greatest place in the world, the Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. This week, we have a preview and a review of Floor 2, The Dark World. I do give it two thumbs up. Plus, Prince Anthony in his segment shows us how he can stand up at a special guest appearance on Comic Book Day. One quick thing before I go. I've gotten involved with this great organization called CAMH, which is the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. One in five Canadians suffers from a mental health or addiction issue in their lifetime. 20% of our population. But yet, mental health only receives 5.5% of Canada's annual health care budget, which is actually down from the 15% that they used to receive on a larger budget. But yet, cosmetic surgery still receives 9%. Something's a bit off there when cosmetic surgery is receiving more money than mental health. So all I ask is that if someone from CAMH comes to your door, gives you a phone call, leaves you a flyer, please help out the organization by donating. I know I am, and I would like to think that everyone out there who's watching this understands the reality of how hard it is to treat a mental illness or an addiction issue. Anyways, that is enough from me. Let's get on with this show. Rock and roll, baby! And here we go. Anthony is ten and a half months old. Still sitting at 40. The fifth one hasn't um, poked through yet. It's really bugging him, so he's been kind of cranky. Uh, he's getting much better at sleeping through the night. He's starting to be able to hold his balance for a little bit. He'll stand up now and let go of what he's holding and stand there by himself for a few seconds when he's holding up. Pulling himself up, he, uh, he's taking little steps to the side and he says, Num num, mama, dada, go 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 is the newest one. And Anthony does not want to go to sleep, he fights hard. Even though he's exhausted, he fights and he fights and then fights some more. And then he's completely miserable until he finally crashes. It takes a lot of work to get him to find the crash. I go to work on one week. I'm excited. Happy birthday, dear Puddles! Cheese, kind of crap. Smackdown was not much better by any means. So John Cena retained his title as I said he would, along with all my other predictions that pretty much all nailed everything right on the head. So now they have John Cena feuding with Randy Orton. That's right. WWE Champ versus World Heavyweight Champ. Unification match set up for TLC in a TLC. I still think it's going to be a weird twist kind of ending where they're just going to exchange belts because that's the way WWE seems to like to roll. Bullshit crap twists that really amount to nothing. I don't want to see like title unified. I didn't want to see it back in the day when Jericho did it and I don't want to see it now. But if someone's going to unify the titles it should definitely be John Cena walking out with both belts. The only bright spots were Raw, SmackDown, and Survivor Series were the CM Punk and Daniel Bryan match. Then the angle that they set up with them on Monday Night Raw, where the Wyatts went after Bryan and the Shield came after Punk. Even though I think him and Daniel Bryan should still be a 
tag team, the beard and the vest. It would be an awesome tag team champ. He wouldn't bring much needed respect back to the tag team division. I just hope this is going to parlay into a, into a decent WrestleMania 30 match for each one of them. Or do one better and have Punk and Brian go one on one at WrestleMania in a 60 man Iron Man match. Yes! Yes! So this week, Raw was from the L.I., and guess who did not appear on the show? That's right, no Zack Ryder on Raw from Long Island. At least he was on Superstars, where he beat Fandango in front of his hometown crowd. But the best Zack Ryder moment this week on Raw was Dolph Ziggler going up for his hardcore match with Sandow, wearing a Zack Ryder shirt. And the rumor is he got huge heat for that. But I can see why he did it. Him and Zack Ryder are tight, they're boys. And I wouldn't mind seeing the two of them go one-on-one -on -one in a WrestleMania 30 match. We were supposed to get it last year. They promoted the hell out of it on Ryder's YouTube show. And then nothing came of it. They both got buried. And they're still getting buried to this day. I am serious, bro! They both deserve better and Zack Ryder should have a decent program. They're trying to build new stars. Well, Zack Ryder will be on top of that list. Because he's not WWE. Just doesn't seem to know what they're doing. Not having Zack Ryder with a storyline or decent matches, not what's best for business. Luxury in Queensway Cinemas. Hello, Mother. I made you proud. <laughs> I really don't see what all the fuss is about. Do you not truly feel the gravity of your crimes? Wherever you go, there is war, ruin, and death. I went down to make God to rule the people of Earth as a benevolent God. Just like you. We are not gods. We are born. We live. We die. Your birthright was to die! Accept your surrender.
Itsiri Yenas Itiath. Yovi Kirath Osa Shleme. Urfeyatse Gori of Yenivar. Born of eternal night, the dark elves come to steal away the light. I knew these stories mother told them to us as children. The leader Malekith made a weapon out of that darkness, and it was called the Ether. While the other relics often appear as stones, the ether is fluid and ever-changing. It changes matter into dark matter. It seeks out host bodies, drawing strength from their life force. Malekith sought to use the ether's power to return the universe to one of darkness. So we just got out of Thor in the Dark Book. It was pretty awesome. I liked it a lot better than the first one. The special effects were fantastic. It's pretty basic though, a bit of Thor story. It was good seeing all the fighting and everything. That was awesome. Special edition stuff. And my own little Mjolnir. It is comic book day, that's right, it's comic book day, November 27th, and it, and it is Empress Magda's birthday. That's who I want to wish her a very happy birthday on this uh, awesome comic book day. So me and my little prince are headed down to Excalibur Comics. We're going to go talk to uh, Rob and Fred, see what they have to say today, right? See who else we can run into this week. Bathrooms at school, the Empress is off having a beautiful massage, so as I said, it's just me and Anthony. That's right. So we're going to head down to Excalibur Comics, and we will... See you soon, people. See you soon, people. Back down here at Excalibur Comics, and I'm wondering what Rob is thinking about for the door. So we made it back down here to Excalibur Comics on this snowy Wednesday. Me and Anthony are headed upstairs. We're going to go talk to the boys, find out what's going on this week, and see who else we can run into up there. And now it is time for the Steps of Doom. That's right, Steps of Doom. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. Catherine's a fest, come on. Come on, Rob. Welcome back to Comic Book Day. Bird Mickey? This is Fred Diana, the usual same guy, but I'm just oh, wearing yeah. a mask. Yeah. Yeah. Getting some mood of things. Yeah. Okay, let's start off with what books I'm going to plug this week. Conan, The People in the Black Circle, a faithful adaptation of Robbie Howard's story. Well written, but most of all, Ariel Aletti has done a great job on the art and stuff. As you can tell, it's beautiful stuff. It's all on the end. Nicely done. Another book that's come out that we all know and love, of course, is Infinity. This is the last issue in the whole series. So we're going to sure we're going to have the big climatic battle against Captain America and Avengers against our good old dear buddy Thanos. So I would recommend that you pick up number six for the conclusion of Infinity. This keeps going on and on. And this is the new Avengers. And again, I always 
plug, not just uh, Mr. Johnson taking him, but my favorite all-time artist, Mike Viadat. Very good artist, and he's a top New Avengers number 12, and he has to pick this one up as well. And, not to be outdone, because this is like Apple and kind of like an Avenger week, the Uncanny Avengers, which is again a well done book, a different storyline, but has all kinds of little interesting things that are happening in it as well. And I, again, beautiful artwork in this one, so something I would strongly, strongly recommend. Latest Indestructible Hulk, okay, number 16. What's interesting about this issue is that it's connected with the new ongoing series with. The Inhumans. So again, something you know, Mark Wade writing it. What the hell? It's always worthwhile getting with Mark Wade writing it. Finally, something that really nice finally came out. It's been a while since it's been out, but I would strongly recommend. Captain Easy Volume Four. Fanagraphics has had a little bit of a problem financially. They asked their uh, fans to help contribute to get them out of out of their little problem. So anyway, this is a beautifully well done book. And again, the Sundays were great. Back in the old days, they were worthwhile getting a look at them, page for page, beautifully colored and beautifully done. But again, uh, Roy Cream did a great job, and this is the fourth and final volume of the series. I would strongly recommend uh, uh, Captain Easy if you want some really nice early work by some very good artists. And that's the book for it. Matthew. Here today, uh, here in Tony's stuff, but I think it's the first time Tony's ever come into the yes, comic shop. It is the first time. <laughs> yes. No. Well, I like Fred's theory. I think I'm making him a conspiracy theorist too. Fred was saying this early this morning that why are we having all, all this uh, Ford news all the time? And, I, and you know what he said? It is to distract the people from the real urgency or real news. So that's going to affect me. And he said, for example, Obamacare is, 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 is disrupting America and will probably bankrupt America. They're not, they're not focusing on that. In America, they're focusing on Rob Ford. And now you're going to have probably a whole line of celebrities backing Ford or saying he's such a nice guy and why is everybody bashing him. That is very similar to the, uh, to the murders of the uh, Memphis Three where we're... Uh, the supposedly Boy Scouts were murdered by these so-called uh, Satanists and uh, all of a sudden all these uh, celebrities started backing the, the, the accused murderers and all evidence appointed to, to them as well that they were the ones who perpetrated yeah, the killings and they even made documentaries trying to, to disseminate or, or misinform that, that these, these, uh, these murderers were, were innocent and then you have all these celebrities backing these murderers. It's all a way to sort of uh, change your view uh, when you see celebrities backing something. Obviously all the evidence pointed to that they were murdered and by these people. But when you have celebrities saying that's not true, double take and say maybe maybe they're right. And the same thing with Ford. You'll see a lot of celebrities now saying, oh he's a nice guy, uh, so what if he smoked or he did he he didn't inhale or whatever, just like Clinton did. You'll see that a lot of wrong things will be exposed about Ford and they'll excuse it because he is one of the elite, and the elites, when they do wrong, they never punish. Uh, you'll see that time and time again, like when uh, Paris Hilton was found with drugs, she got a slap in the wrist. Uh, Bill Clinton, he, he said he smoked marijuana, but uh, he didn't inhale. Even Obama, during his school days, you have pictures of him with him and his buddies in the university smoking uh, marijuana and so forth. So we all say, what's the big deal? It's, 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 it's uh, truly is wrong, but because it's been put out and, and you sort of now sympathize with the person who did wrong you, in your mind sort of justify it that it's okay which means you know it's not okay really they're just brainwashing as Porky Pig would say that's all folks thank you for joining us here for episode 84 of the revolution and come back next week for a brand new episode of the Zeta Nation right here on YouTube go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel one word Emperor Zeta right here on YouTube. Pick up your drop dead pinups, Electric Night CD, check them out on iTunes, grab their t-shirts and follow them on Twitter at drop dead pinups. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. 
head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book and conspiracy theory related needs. And I am the intellectual savior of the masses. <laughs>